Hello and welcome to another Beer Club video. This video is the build video for my next encounter terrain entry uh, for the 10x10 challenge. And the theme this month is backup plan. Now, my initial idea was to do Caradras, uh, where, the, uh, um, where they are trying to cross the uh, pass uh, and uh, Saruman calls down a horrendous storm and then they have to go through the mines of Moriah, obviously the uh, Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, but I discarded that idea and actually I've seen it discussed a few times, so I'm quite pleased because I don't want to do what someone else is doing. Instead, what I'm going to do, and this is inspired by a book I'm reading at the moment, is I've printed out this little ship here. Um, I got it three free on my mini factory and I will link to that in the description below if you want to get it yourself. It's printed out very, very nicely in a small scale, very, very clear, very, very clean, really, really impressed actually. And the idea is, is I'm going to have this ship trapped in some ice. So I'll probably have to damage it a bit, drop some of the, uh, which is a shame in a sense, but that's what it is, drop some of the um, rigging down and what have you. Uh, trapped in some ice, have a little camp next to it, and then potentially a trail or some people walking away. And they've obviously, they're exploring the um, polar regions um, and they've got trapped in the pack ice and now they've had to go to their backup plan, which is try to walk out. So that's my idea. So let's see whether it will work out. Let's uh, see how this build goes. I am looking forward to it. I'm hoping that it's going to be relatively quick and simple. I've got a lot on uh, more and more all the time now that it's coming into the building season. Um, the renovation I'm doing is starting to kick off again, uh, but we shall see. Uh, I've got a couple of weeks. Let's see whether we can get this smashed out of the park. So you can see the ship that I printed. I'm really, really pleased with it actually. I'm probably going to print <coughs> another couple um, because it's so good. But what I need to do now, this has been washed, but not cured, because I'm going to attempt, attempt to get rid of all of the supports before I cure it, which just makes it a little bit easier to clean up. Um, so I'm going to do that, uh, and once I've done that, I'll stick it in the curing machine um, and let it go off, because it's uh, obviously a resin print. Uh, I won't film all of this, because I'm going to be fiddling around quite a lot like this. Normally with these prints, you can just come in and like tear it off. I can probably do a little bit here. You can hear it pop. But with this being so close and so finely detailed on all of the rigging, I'm just coming in with a knife. So um, hopefully this is gonna work nicely. I'm not gonna break it. But the good thing is, is because this is gonna be a shipwreck, if I break it, it's not the end of the world, is it? <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat. So I'll get that done um, and then cure it and then I'll bring you along for the next step. So let's talk layout, because I really need to crack on with this actually. <laughs> I've just been, Ignoring it. Thinking though, I have been thinking, but I haven't been making any progress. And as I'd like to do, I like to put about 20 minutes a day into this and I've just put no time in actual creating for the past couple of days. I primed the ship. Um, I'm not painted it because I'm not sh totally sure how much damage I'm gonna do to it. And so there's no point in painting it if I'm gonna start gouging holes in it. And I am gonna do some damage in it because it is shipwrecked. So the idea is, is the ship's gonna be sitting roughly here and it'll be canted and kind of like what have you like this. Um, at least this sail will be down over here and this sail will be down as well um, and I'm probably going to attempt with a rotary tool to, to rip up the other sails as well so they look like they're in shreds because that's how it would be but this, but this actual um, mast is going to be down and on the ice. So the ice will be probably, I'll probably make the ice just with uh, plaster mixed with some white paint because I want it to be nice and pure and obviously I'll be coming along with some blue and what have you to make it look icy. Um, and that's going to have, maybe have, even have a rock or, or some kind of a cliff um, over here in front. There'll be a camp here with, I think, some crosses, so some, some people have died, sadly, um, and some tents and then Going off the back, because this is going to be the front, going off the back will be a trail going through the snow. It's going to hopefully be a simple build, because, well, I want to do a simple one after last one, which was just crazily tall and, and big. I want this to be small. Um, and I think the first thing I'm going to do, and what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to get the rock and stick the rock in here um, and glue that down, leave that overnight. And then what I can do is once that's dry, then I can come along and I can um, put the plaster on, fix the ship in place um, and move on from there. While the rock is drying, um, which I will bring you along for, I will also clip off this front 
um, like I say, this front sail, um, and then get the rotary tool and attempt to trash the sails on the on the rest of them. Now the very good thing is, obviously, if I don't make a good job, I can print another one. The benefit of 3D printing. Uh, I don't want to have to. I'd like to use this one. So yeah, there we are. We have a plan, we have a layout, uh, and we have some next steps. So I'm going to gather together some materials for making this kind of outcropping, and I'll bring you along when I come to shape it and stick it on. So when I recorded the last clip, I was seriously thinking about carving a, a, a rock face. However, I suddenly noticed a box of stones, as I'm sure everyone has on their shelf. <laughs> and in that box of stones was this fantastic deep red looking thing. I mean, look at that, isn't it brilliant? Isn't it lovely? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna glue that down here. Um, and I'm currently umming and ahhing about whether I'm gonna use my gator glue or whether I'm gonna use PVA. Um, I think I might use PVA because it won't, um, it, it won't, won't spread anywhere. Um, that um, gator glue, as brilliant as it is, does sometimes kind of expand a bit too much. And this will only be holding it in place while I put the, um, the rest of the of the stuff around it, so the uh, the um, plaster for the snow fields. So I'll just put a dollop of PVA under that. When that dries, that should hold it enough. Um, I'll put a little bit more on actually, just around here. Um, and then what I'll do is I'm going to start looking at this ship and looking at actually breaking it apart and carving it up, which I will bring you along for for a bit of it. I'm a little bit nervous about what it's going to be like. I'll probably have a bit of a play and then show you whether it's worked or not rather than doing it all on camera because uh, it might take a little bit of focus and concentration. But yeah, there we are. So we've got this fantastic red rock which is going to be really uh, striking against the snowfield. So after a couple of full starts, I'm making use of this tack life uh, which I need to thank Quinn for pointing me to, as always, as I always do. Um, and I've managed, as you see, to clip off and destroy this uh, front sail, um, some of it literally destroyed it, pinging across um, when I attempted to use my snips um, and when I attempted to use my crafting knife. But with this, it's working okay. Now, I'm not going to be able to talk because I'm sanding down um, resin and you need to make use of one of these if you're sanding resin. Don't, don't screw around with this stuff. So I'm going to put this back on now. I just brushed up before I filmed um, and I'll show you how it looks and then I'll turn the camera off again and finish the rest of the actual ship uh, but I'll work on this one for now. So yeah, so just using a little ball sanding uh, tool on this. Um, so let's get this mask on and show you what it looks like. So there you are. You can see that that works really well. It's not very quick, but it does work. So I'm going to carry on now. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll get the rest of the sails done, do the rest of the damage on the ship, um, and I'll bring you back and show what it looks like when it's completely finished. So that's uh, dried okay with the PVA. It's obviously not great. Um, and um, what I'm now going to do uh, is start applying some plaster. So this is polycell polyfiller mixed up with a bit of water and a bit of PVA just to give it some elasticity and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting it on I might even put it on with a brush because I can just slop it on and then spread it out that's probably going to be the easiest way to do this so if I just scoop it out with the spoon and spread it around and this is the snow and the ice field obviously so see if that's enough and what I'll do is when I've got this spread how I want it to be then I will come along and I will press the the ship in it gives a good amount of working time this so I'm not in a major hurry and it does go off quite hard so hopefully it will be hard wearing enough I don't want it to be completely flat. I'm pretty happy with it having some ripples and what have you because that's what ice shelves are like. And what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to carve this once it's dry. So the idea is, is that I'll be able to carve in like some cracks and what have you, particularly where behind where the ships come from so you can see that it's 
maybe been driven on by a storm or something um, and is now stuck fast. So I actually mixed up exactly the right amount. That was a good luck. Okay, so let's keep sp spreading this around and uh, get this looking how I want it to. Kind of shape it, it doesn't hold peaks very well, but it's going to be enough for now. I think I'm just going to leave that in and then come and paint it afterwards carefully. And the idea is, and I'll do this now as well, is that we're going to have just the suggestion of a track, and I will make more of this. I may need to come in and grind that in actually. It's not holding it enough. No, it's still too liquid. I have to keep an eye on that and come back when it's uh, when it's less uh, liquid. But you can see there we have our water, frozen ice, and our ship stuck in. So I have to keep an eye on it, make sure I don't get any anything like get flown over the edges um, too badly. Um, and that should now dry nicely in the next half hour or so. Um, and at one point it will become uh, so I can actually um, start to carve it and shape it. I'll bring you along when I get to that so you can see what I do. But for now, I'm just going to leave that alone. And uh, yeah, pretty pleased so far. That's, uh, that's going to look like a really nice little scene. More teeny tiny printing. So at the back behind the ship there are some little tents. Now, when they print out in real life, uh, well, they're, they're about 10 centimeters long actually, so I scaled them down massively. These ones here are um, three millimeters long, and then the slightly larger one at the back there is five millimeters long. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm gonna take these downstairs and I'm gonna paint them. And I'm also gonna paint the ship. So um, th that will be done with wood and then with canvas and I'll do the, uh, the little tents as ca as with canvas and then I can stick them in place and can start or I can uh, start to sculpt in the track um, and add maybe the graveyard. So yeah, flying to completion on this, really, really enjoying it, really enjoying the fact of uh, I've done, done a simpler build this time, but I'm really loving the story it's telling. I think it's gonna look great. So yeah, I will bring you back, um, tell you what paints I used, but it's probably gonna be uh, Vallejo canvas for the tents and for the sails and Vallejo old wood for the um, wood <laughs> and then some wash from um, Agrax Earthshade. So that's what I'll probably do, um, uh, but I'll let you know. So as I say, I've done exactly the colours I said I would and I've actually gone ahead and stuck the tent in. So let me zoom that in a bit. You can see they are teeny, teeny, tiny. I think they look quite good. <laughs> I'm actually quite pleased. So I'm gonna let that settle in my head, work out what the next thing I want to do is. Um, certainly the plan is to have footprints going off or a track or a path going off in this direction. I'm wondering whether I shouldn't put like a splash of blood on the ground over here where it looks like they might have hunted. And I absolutely do want to have some, um, some gravestones over here by the uh, by the rock. So yeah, very pleased. Very simple, but exactly what I wanted to do. So the next thing I need to do on this is carve in the track. The track is going to go from back here behind going past this rock and it's going to come kind of in a in a curve like this. And this is going to take some time and probably require more than one different tool but that's basically the idea we're going to have a scored track kind of doing this and then fanning out away from these tents so I'm going to get that done 
I'll put some music on and you can watch and uh, when that's finished this is pretty much done I do still want to put some gravestones but I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that at the moment so if I don't get to the gravestones I'm not going to consider it a failure um, what I really wanted was this track this is their backup plan There we are. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. It definitely looks like a track through the snow. I'm going to let that set again. Let me think about a little bit more about this uh, graveyard that I want to put up here. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. I really have ummed and ahed and ummed and ahed about this. Uh, and I still haven't really come up with a good solution, so unfortunately I've run out of time. Today is the final day of the build, so I'm just going to have to go with my backup plan. So let me talk you through this. What I want is I want to have a bit of a burial area over by the rock so these are the people that didn't make it and I've been trying to work out like materials where I can make crosses now the scale of this is just stupid if you look at the size of the tents yeah they're going to be tiny crosses um, and the smallest shivers of splinters of wood that I found are just way too oversized even I mean that's that's just too big even if I just trim off the very end so what I'm doing instead very very simply is I'm going to use a lead pencil to draw in shadows like this. And I'm just going to put eight in, I think. I've already done a few before I started filming, so I wanted to check it out and see if it worked. And there we are. That went badly out of focus while I was drawing, but there you can see now that we have just a small cemetery for eight people who didn't make it. So the final thing for this build now is going to be to tidy up the edges. So uh, sand down where it's gone over the edge a little bit there um, and also paint that edge. And then I will finish this project and get some pictures and uh, submit them and see whether it wins or not. It probably won't. There's been some absolutely superb builds this week, this month, but I don't really care. I've really enjoyed this. Um, it's not about winning, it's about taking part, absolutely. Um, and this is a lovely, been a lovely change in, in speed from what I normally do for these, where I normally go a little bit crazy. This one is just, well, it is what it is. It's very sparse and I'm very pleased with it. A really simple build for me uh, but really cool I mean the story it tells was perfect is exactly how I imagined it and working in such a tiny scale again was re a really good challenge I think probably my favorite part which might surprise you was the graves just I spent days owing and ahhing thinking about scraps of wood and splinters of this and all these kinds of stupid ideas and then I just realized I just need to draw down the shadows and it was it just worked so well. I think that's my favourite part. Uh, what was your favourite part? I'd love to hear uh, what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what part you like the best. If you uh, didn't like it at all, let me know as well. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I always do com reply to all your comments. So yeah, don't be shy. Um, and yeah, if you get this far, really appreciate it. I love the fact that you're watching my videos. And uh, yeah, that does really inspire me to continue, to continue on this journey. So thank you. I wrap up by saying, as I always do, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.